Good morning, folks. We've got space weather we're watching for tonight. We'll also be keeping a close eye on the crust in the North Atlantic. We'll peek in on some weather and three top science articles today, including a blast from the past. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. The sun was relatively calm. Sunspot number is dropping as the big spots depart. No major coronal holes, no big solar flares either. There was some crackling at the southern departing active region and a filament release on the north. That filament was the only eruptive event on the Earth-facing half of the sun, and it is not heading for Earth. But of course, we will have our eyes on the solar wind tonight when all forecast models expect the CME from about two days ago to arrive. Forecast is calling for geomagnetic storm activity and auroral excitement. We'll be watching for that tonight. Up next, while there were some larger quakes elsewhere in the world over the last day, many eyes are fixed on Iceland. It's the largest earthquake swarm in a while there, and the country has begun evacuating citizens from the area where a significant volcano lies below near that seismic activity. Volcano Watch is on for southwest Iceland. Folks, global warming has sent a record-breaking snowstorm to Alaska. Anchorage breaks their high historical marks, and that is the first such report of the season this year. Jet streams are keeping the Arctic air away from the lower 48 for a while here. Our articles are all throwbacks today, in a way. Up first, we come back to a long-discussed issue for the western states. Poor land management and the cessation of controlled burns makes major wildfire outbreaks more likely. Those smaller burns were stopped in the name of climate change, but they only led to more severe events later down the line. Glad they're catching on. Up next, a throwback to the ozone discussions we've had many times. Here they dive deep into the indirect and secondary destruction via atmospheric chemistry changes. They keep finding new and expanded mechanisms for big solar storms to reduce the ozone layer, and I just hope they get this into climate models soon enough for a revelation. Lastly, folks, every month or so I look for a historical article on geomagnetic excursions from before the time when this channel began to focus on them more closely. This one is from 2015 and suggests that 30% field loss is something of a tipping point where the data says that when we get a major reversal or excursion, the field must reach that 30% loss state, an apparent dividing line between just normal regular secular variation and the major excursions and pole flip events. We're likely getting very close to that mark now, as we've often discussed, especially recently, with those amazing auroral displays. Folks, it is one week until the next Observer event, pretty much last chance to get tickets here. We'll be out at Observer Ranch one more time before the winter sets in here in Colorado. Grab your tickets at the link below. Greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.